Stone, I can't imagine this world without music. Uh, I <laughs> keep saying that if if I were to lose my hearing, then I would end my life, because it's okay to be blind, but I don't think I could be deaf. Uh, when I when I got into the film industry, I, I mean, I was essentially a guitar player, and uh, could hardly play the keys. I mean, except like. Uh, like Rohit, when he heard, when he learned how to play the toy keyboard at age of four, you know, it was just. Uh, but yes, I was uh, musically. Uh, uh, what should I say? Uh, my vocabulary was very good because I was listening to jazz when I was in the sixth standard, listening to the Beatles. So I grew up uh, in a very uh, strange cocktail of music, which was not part of the times when ABBA and Boniem were ruling. And I, I had an incredible. Uh, uh, dollop of Hindi music, Hindi film music. My father had an incredible classical collection. So it was uh, a combination of everything. Uh, I used to be a singer, and then when I when I when I finished my tenth, I had to learn the instrument on my own because it wasn't uh, it was very taboo in my family. But uh, I was a very driven person, and uh, uh, I. Uh, formed a band but still a guitar player so uh, why i'm why i'm saying this is because finally when uh, i had to work on film projects i had to hire keyboard players to work for me i had to hire an engineer and i became very dependent on all these people now the thing is i had the vision of what i wanted to what i wanted to hear on my soundtrack but i i just didn't have the hands to do it and finally, I I remember when uh, I couldn't get some keyboard players, and one of my engineers was not available. Uh, I remember one day, uh, Mr. Rangupal Verma said, "This is during must. That why do you need this engineer? Why can't you do it yourself?" And I remember one of my uh, I call him my god brother is Mr. Nagarjuna, who gave me my first break in the Nepal Artha. He said, "Sandeep, you can do this on your own. Why do you need?" To depend on anybody, and and like I said, I'm a, I'm a obsessed, driven person. I pick up the keyboard, and uh, I remember uh, around the time, uh, just after Satya, uh, I think uh, after a couple of films, I decided to take a break and do an album called Mitti, and that's the time I started programming on my own, got into mixing the album, not to prove to the engineer or the guy who's doing the sound design or the musician that I can do it. I just wanted to do it. I got in so much that uh, right now it's been 25 years in the business. I, 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 I can tell an engineer or a musician that what he's doing is not what I want and in his own language. So uh, I think music uh, is, is very important, but knowing every aspect of music and since since you're talking about filmmaking, I I can't see a visual without sound, you know, because the sound is doing the storytelling even if the visual is not. You know, the protagonist may not be in a scene, but he's there in the form of music, you know, telling the tale. So uh, I think music is, is very, very, very essential and uh, they go hand in glove, music and visual. So uh, I... I I was asking Amla that is music a separate part of your curriculum or is it jointly part of your curriculum? So she, she said it's jointly part of the curriculum. So yes, she's fired on because I'll be going on like this. So first of all, I believe that uh, doing a background score is a thankless job. Okay, we are like, we, we, we hardly... Uh, we hardly in the in the list of you know technicians that you'd find in a poster or I mean we are hired to do the job and you know uh, nobody comes and says wow what effects wow what a score because uh, it, it I mean nowadays you are getting a little bit of recognition but except for probably Shole and Satya maybe nobody spoke about scores of films you know in the past okay. Uh, and I don't, I don't blame the audience because the audience is supposed to be looking at the film in totality. You know, he comes out and says it's a great film. He doesn't, he doesn't need to educate himself. Like a lot of times, you know, we musicians expect people to be musicians, but maybe they don't need to know the artist. 
you know if as long as they like the music you know that's that's good enough i mean also in the past nobody used to put out credits for you know who played on what you know and who played which guitar and who played this piece nowadays i mean because everybody is demanding and it's 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 i mean uh, it's fair to them that you know they are known you know uh, a lot of these musicians don't get their videos made it's only the singer or the actor you know so all this is uh, uh, but it's all coming in the foreground right now you know it is coming in the foreground so uh, uh, sound design sound i mean music direction background score i mean they're all uh, they're all three departments but i believe that uh, everybody needs one another i i whenever i i work on a score i i want the effects even a rough effects to be put so that i'm scoring with the effects in mind what used to happen was we used to put the music and the and the director and the, the producers would come and watch and the music is expected to do everything and then finally when the effects come a lot of our music is pulled down you know because nobody kept the fact that the effects would come in mind so i always insist that i want a, a rough dialogue track even if it's not the final dialogue the effects laid down so i can score within you know because eventually it's uh, your lows mids and highs and you know i i have to find my way within that space if i uh, if i don't then somebody is going to be muted you know i believe first you need to have a good ear you know that that's that's very important you know i mean then you know you can get into the technicals but if you don't hear something i mean i i always get irritated when people are always fidgeting with the waveform and i mean you're not listening what's the point in you know going through your 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 technical uh, you know aspects on on your screen you know and and messing with the waveform and you know bringing it down by 5k and you know 2k and you know all this if everything has to sound good that's the first thing i mean we were mixing for for the main speaker we we, we were into wave files now it's all down to mp3 you know and even now we take care that we mix for the phone for a small bluetooth speaker you know because i believe that you know it's it's sad but someone plays my music off the computer speaker and i can't go and i can't i can't check and tell him no please put on your headphones he is not going to he's he's excited he plays the track on his phone so uh, i i i think uh, uh, the ears are very important i i believe if it sounds good it doesn't matter what technicalities or whether it's clipping or you know as long as it sounds good you're home uh, in our times when i think 25 years ago in 96 in fact when i did my first film with uh now i had already uh, started going and knocking at doors and uh, i think it started with making demos you know mm. and getting you know some lyric writer to write a song and but that was then and from then and now everything has changed your your i mean your today you have the youtube culture your 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 learning uh, bits and pieces you know and i think this bits and pieces learning is never going to work for you you know i i used to hate history in class but i insist that you learn history when you want to appreciate music when you want to appreciate a composer Okay. Yes. So I I think I think you need to learn you need to study you know and uh, uh it's it's like I mean people believe that okay we don't need to go to college and we can take a specialized course but I think it's all part of that it's part of your upbringing and your learning and putting you through that discipline of learning if I didn't I still have a habit of writing in books I I don't type I mean it makes me remember okay and uh, it's just that discipline that's carried forward into my now uh, when i work abroad i mean I, I, nowadays i work with people from abroad i i put down my idea i put it on notation so every every software has you know midi notation so you you know all they need are the chords you know unless you're asking them to play exactly what you want them to play and it's sent there and as long as you're very clear about what you want you know you will get back what you asked for but if you are if you are wishy washy and you are unclear then you are wasting each other's time 
So I believe uh, everybody needs to go through the textbook, okay, whatever that's part of your syllabus. Even, even yes. At least graze through it, you know. Yes. I mean, it's like you go through YouTube and you have courses right now. You go through it and then you pick the one that you want and you specialize in it, you know. But it's important. You need to know. I, I believe a music composer needs to know filmmaking. You know, yes. unless you unless you know that you're not going to respect, you know, that form. I mean, that's come to you. You know, I I, I was doing Sadak too, and we took 20 days to do it because I I I I listened to Mahesh Bhatt and what he had to say because it was his film, and okay. it, and it's his vision. I can add to his vision, but I can't make it my vision. I think first of all when you do film music it's not about what you want it's completely see it I believe it's the first the director okay and the story nowadays the problem is now you have the actors you have the music company and I believe that by the time you cracked your song and your song the film is ready you may be asked to do another song in the same situation okay because it's you know so that, that's gone into some other but it's it's I believe a film is is from the director's vision. Like Nene Pallarda was completely brand new music. We use brand new singers, you know, and maybe that's why it sounded fresh also. And I was asked to do many more Nene Pallardas, which didn't interest me. Okay. But now what happens is I have another director who, who probably likes a certain sound, but he still wants a Nene Pallarda. It's never going to happen. You see? So I believe it's a film is, is entirely the director's vision that I am going and uh, enhancing or and that's why we have to be in lock and key me and the director we got to agree on a bunch of things we got to agree on a bunch of sounds you know and then the director's got to leave me to paint my you know uh, I, I, I have the art has to finally come from me but it's the director who's got to you know lay the canvas for me and say here, here are the colors now go and paint and uh, I think that's what happened with uh, Nene Pallartha. I, had, I, had, I think Vamshi and I uh, tuned so beautifully. I mean, we, I remember we, we tuned so much that one of the songs was asked to be changed, but we agreed on the song. But Nag came and said, you know what? You guys are getting really indulgent. We need a kind of, you know, a family song that, you know, that, and that was the, that became the title song. But uh, it's, it's okay for the director and the music composer to, you know, be indulgent because it's eventually uh, the if you're indulgent, you'll come up with something new. And if it fails, then it'll be called a bad experiment, you know, but, uh, but nowadays it's very difficult. Now you have the music companies and uh, suddenly you are, you are in a, uh, you may just become not the only music director, but you may have four composers and you know, it's like a Chaya Geet that happens. It's, it's very different right now. It was not like how it used to be. Maybe in the South, it's still the same. But in the north, it's it's not that way. Or in, in, in Mumbai, it's not that way. I had uh, met Mr. Burma in uh, Nagarjuna's house. And uh, he had come to show some... Uh, he had, Basically, I think Suman's film, his debut film was being planned. And he had come to meet him and I was there. And... Uh, uh, he was playing the promos of Satya and uh, I said, and by the way, uh, there's a history to it also because Mr. Verma did not like Nine Pellartha. So I was already on minus with him. Okay. In terms of music, <laughs> it was not his favorite music. He hated it. So he, he he's, he's phenomenal. He, he knows the Godfather book by heart. So he was quoting from some page and he saw, he played uh, uh, Satya's promo, and he had put Broken Arrow's music, which is Hans Zimmer. And I said, oh, Broken Arrow. So he was like, ah, oh, so you know about soundtracks. And we started talking, and then uh, he, he, I think Nag never pushes anybody onto anybody. He leaves it to you if you want to. So, but he said, Sandeep is there if you want to try him out for Prem Kaza. So, I think there was some sort of, you know, talk, but uh, I saw the promos, and uh, I said, uh, wow, who's doing this? Who's doing the score for the film? I just asked. He said, no, I don't think anybody is. And actually, Vishal Bhardwaj was doing the film score, but he had gone to London or something. So 
So he said, oh, okay. So he said, would you like to come to Mumbai with me? I said, yeah, sure. But that's how Ramu is. He's very impulsive. So he took me there and he showed me a bunch of uh, promos that he'd cut and a reel. And then I came back and I I actually wrote The Mood of Satya in, in my house in Hyderabad. Okay. On my VS-880 that was very, uh, it's like an eight track recorder. Oh. And... Uh, yeah, with my musicians, Jim and Alvin, and we'd all just put it down. And then Ramu came and then and then he heard it and I thought he'd be blown away, but he was like, you know, anyways, we've decided to work together, so come with me. And he showed me the film. Now, when I go to the uh, theater, I think we were at this Dimple Preview Theater, and already there was this bad talk going on of the film, you know, what has he gone and made? And Manoj and Saurabh were there and they were like, yeah, this is what Okay, like be bad enough that we've got a bad scene scenario in the film, and he, who, who has he got? This Telugu music director, and he's going to compose the music for Satya. So they were all looking at me, and uh, I and H Sri, the the amazing engineer who's who's been Rayman's engineer, for, he was also there, and we were very close. So I said, you know, Ramu, uh, where are those promos of yours? He said, must be at home. He said, just can you take me then? She was like, I said, what? I said, I have an idea. So I go there and. Uh, I said, you have a tape recorder and Ramu is like very, very disturbed. So he, anyways, he provides me a CD player and uh, I said, can you just switch on the promo? And I put the the promo, the, the music that I had co- uh, constructed for Satya and he looked at me, he kept looking at me and he's like, my God, this this works. And then the next piece worked. And, and I went to, I went to Chennai and I started doing the music and I remember he came back and now, normally what you do in a film is you mark the film, you know, you, I mean, normally we used to put crosses and C1 and C2, that's change one, change two. So <laughs> he, he said, you don't mark it, you just do what you want. And that's how Satya was made. It was uh, a lot of my decisions. In fact, I'd gone against a lot of things he had said. And, uh, and we, and the same thing happened with Korn also. And we started this, we stopped marking films, you know, I think the next film I marked was Om Shanti Om after that, you know, but when I, when I showed Farah the film, I removed the marks and because I changed stuff and she didn't even realize. So the, the marks are basically for the mixing engineer in the theater who, who, when he sees the cross is coming, he moves the fader and then he sees it. So I remember getting into an argument with one of the mixing engineers that I said, so he said, Mark the guy. I said, what, why, why do you need the mark? Don't you use this? Use your ears. Why do you need, I mean, are you visually mixing the film? You see, so we, we've gone and changed a lot of these things. You know, I mean, the, the traditional methods of, you know, of scoring, <coughs> marking, you know, mixing. And obviously now with, that's when Avid came and then the editing from Steenbeck to Avid changed, you know, and you know, Steenbeck is very traditional, you know, I mean, but with Avid, you know, you go into microscopic and then when the same thing happened with the, with, with the theaters having uh, Pro Tools 24 and 48, you know, you, you started saying, can we bring this piece from here to there? You couldn't do that with tape, you know, or with heights, you had to, you had to <laughs> fix the piece and be done. Now you can, you know, so now it's gotten so microscopic and like I think in Hans Zimmer's case, I have spoiled everybody. That's how, we, I mean, today anybody can do anything right now. I think with, I mean, you're, you're getting apps today where I can become Spider-Man and uh, you know Superman with my, my image replay. So I think technology has gone into some other zone. I think, but it shouldn't spoil the traditional uh, and the tradition of the way we made music and films, you know, I think, I think that, that, that step by step, you know, now you can just, you know, you're having different edits of telling t- stories right now, you know, you're, I mean, it's, it's, if you, if you watch a film in between, you may get confused, you know, I mean, but, but that's the way they tell a tale. So it's just getting used to the new normal. It's just like the pandemic right now, wait for another five more months and you'll see what happens. music composer that, or the music composers that are part of the song making process uh, they have we are not in touch with them at all you know they gave their tracks 
if the song is edited then there's a guy to edit the song according to you know or they or they edit it in their studio and they send it i mean we get their tracks because if we have to use elements from their song in the theme then we get the tracks but we don't hear of them so okay. the only only people we hear of are the sound designers the guy who do who do, the, the guy who does the effects he 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 manages to collect the dialogue if it's if it's a uh, sync sound then he's supposed to clean up the dialogue you know and uh, you know what happens is if there are a lot of movies okay and uh, uh, you have been uh, contracted to deliver a uh, effects to me he probably because he's taken the booking and he's doing three films and now suddenly he this film that he's supposed to submit is now in the it was supposed in the way supposed supposed to be in the waiting list in number 3 now it it becomes number 4 and i am waiting for the tracks and i don't get it and you know all this happens so uh, we don't we don't really get to work with the the sound designer also together i mean in hollywood it, they're all working together you know zimmer knows the the guy who's the top of the line sound guy who's working with chris nolan's film and they are exchanging stuff even at the demo stages i get effects from the editor who puts the effects because the editor needs to present the film to various people so he has to put some uh, some music from some soundtrack till we give our music and and the and the stock effects you know there's no foley done and that's how they watch the film you know so uh, we never really i mean okay in parmanu also we were supposed to work together but i managed to get hold of the effects guy only towards the end and then he had to make changes the hmm. approvals would have happened together you know but now now you're waiting on some sound which has come and now you want to see with the with the background score whether the sound works we don't seem to have that practice but maybe with smaller films independent films i think that practice would be there emotion is uh, uh my my emotion towards a, towards something would be different from your emotion towards something you know it's, it's just interpretation but yes. uh, uh i think if i have all the time in the world i would be able to emote better but if i am in the middle of a deadline or i'm in the middle of uh, you know i'm in the middle of two films then my emotions will be very restricted you know <laughs> because there's no there's no time to concentrate you know but i also believe that you don't need too much time i believe the first emotion that comes out is the emotion but what happens to that emotion right. by the time by the time you have four other guys who are dissecting your emotion it becomes very <laughs> else you know now nowadays with with satya it was only mr verma who decided now you have the writer coming i mean it's not it's like i i, I worked with on on three prabhu deva films great guy what a guy to work with very precise <laughs> but he would consult his writers also so when he hugs me that's me that means there's going to be changes not be anything is because it goes very well and then the writers come and this is sir only here on that portion can we do this and then we do this and then finally the portion just before that gets removed you know so at the end of the day it's not my emotion anymore it's it's so many people's emotions so i i think uh, when you have a filmmaker who can take the call and then and take the call entirely on his own without consulting four other people then then i would be able to really emote otherwise it's uh, it's basically you know uh, working on every but i think it's in sadak i had only mr mahesh but and it was completely and we were working i've never worked with him before i've interacted with him and this is a film after 20 years and mm. uh, and and don't forget we are not meeting each other because i am in bangalore and he is in mumbai okay and we did we, and and so this also uh, this thing about you know uh, working across the across the globe across cities across uh, states and is it difficult it is the best thing because i think when you are close to each other and you're close to each other for a long time i think you your first idea will become the fourth idea after two days but when i give you something and you are there you get time to chew on it you know you can right. decide for sure whether it works. but if i'm there then you say are you or kuch bajao yaar and or kuch bajao then <laughs> then we are not clear you see yes 
So I also uh, I also believe that uh, uh, we, people used to first say, "Arey, we don't want you to put stock music." And see, first of all, stock music is put so that you know the person or the investor gets an idea of the film, you know, when he's watching it hey. in, the, in the rough stages. But what happens is the editor is cutting to the tempo of the stock music. Now, if I have to go and rechange that, I have yes. to still stick to the tempo, you know. So, and if it's that kind of action kind of film, then then I'm screwed. Okay, I remember, <laughs> but I I remember there was a editor who got basically screwed because of this. He did a he did a piece and he took some uh, for this film Musafir, Sanjay Gupta's film. Uh. He cut yes. the trailer and and then he gave it to me, and then then I was about to do it and suddenly Sanjay Gupta says, "Arey Sandeep ka theme leke abhi you cut the trailer, means cut the trailer that you wanted to cut." <laughs> this guy panicked completely because he said, "How can I do it?" I said, "See, that is why I tell you, why didn't you cut the trailer with my theme in the beginning?" But no, you are you are so used to, you know, see because a promo or a trailer cutter guy suddenly he is asked to edit a film. It's a different thing altogether. you know yes. i mean you're telling a story or not you're not presenting a two minute advert and everything changes so we have these experience so i think what happens is uh when you have somebody like i'll tell you my best work i would say was when i started off because i had no fear i had no rules i was not uh, uh you know what happens is when you start collecting more and more information you start to restrict yourself because now you have new filters that have come in see right. so i always take these breaks i stop doing films i i stop doing it uh, after parmanu and then uh, uh, my i i was i had, i was doing parmanu and my father was admitted to hospital so he said i hope we will not come to go back so i said let me finish this film and then i'll be here and then he passed away last year and then after that for four months i was like what do i do and i said okay you know what i just want to make the music i want to make so i opened my own audio company just so that i can release the music i want when nobody tells me what to do okay <laughs> if it sells it sells it doesn't it doesn't but i'm still making the music and i i i created 15 albums in 7 months in between i had to stop because i had to do this film and i'm back again but i think what happens is when you start doing film work you are finally doing what people are telling you to do i mean it's 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 basically other people's visions that you are following and it and that vision gets cut from half to quarter to 18 to 116 and then your vision is just this much so i believe that uh, when you get back to doing your own stuff you know it's like you know your 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 memory your, your it's like we have muscle memory for everything we have the same for you know for for our, for my mouse moving in a direction for my keyboard i need to get that you know cooking and so i so i need to get that emotion that you were saying back i think he should make music for himself first i think uh it's very uh, it's very difficult to compose music for someone else because uh, first you need to know yourself then you can decide that you know okay i want to make music for myself and i'll keep it for my album you know because you can push it you know people get upset when you know when you make a tune and it's rejected a lot of times and there's a lot of rejection yes because sir. you know you because who asked you to make the tune that you want you can make it and you can push it but if he doesn't like it or they don't like it then you can't get upset it's it's not it's not it's your film but it's not your vision you know and uh, i and i think it's just going to get even more and more tougher right now you know because there are some people who are not are not musical but they are there to sell okay and and they are there to sell so they are putting in the money because they wait there's a, there's going to be an roi somewhere and your your investment is musically and creatively which is going to be broken into several parts and you can't if you get upset then you will have to quit and uh, i mean i have gotten upset also i remember in fact uh, i uh, i mean no i'm not naga watching but uh, during prem katha we there was one situation where i had worked so many versions and nobody liked it i think it was my fault because i was trying to push what i wanted and i was so upset that i had recorded some tune on on my vs880 
and that VS-880 crashed just when I was about to take the flight. Okay, so I left the machine and I took a tape recorder and I hummed some tune on, on the aircraft. And then Ramu comes, I said, Sandeep, what do you have? And I hummed the tune and he said, this is fantastic. And he said, what about the antra? And I made it on the spot in five, 10 minutes. And that, that became the biggest hit of Prem Katha. And while I was making the song, I hated it even, even more. But it became the biggest hit. It's called Devudu Karun Stardani. Massive hit. People, in, people were throwing change in the theaters in Bangalore and Kapali. Okay, the singer told me, Raji. <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay, but you know, for me, my memory of this song. So I think you just have to, you know, I think it's not even an ego. And for someone like me, it's, it's, it's my creativity has been questioned. But, but for someone, it's an ego. You know, Are, he rejected my song. And so I think we have to just understand where when you're making music for films, there's a very strong commercial uh, element involved. It has to sell. It has to be popular. It doesn't mean, you know, you, you can con somebody and make something and it's going to work. It may happen once, but it won't happen every time. Because there's, there's, still, there's still your passion and emotion to come through. You know, you can't mock something. You'll be caught, basically. You know, it'll come through in your, in your delivery. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, coming to what you were saying, you know, earlier we used to just hum a tune. Somebody would be playing the guitar and it would be as simple as that. Today, you know, people want to hear the tune and it has to be as close to what you're finally going to give them. And just imagine after all that work, it gets rejected. You've got to go back and start again from, you know, I guess it's that process and that, and that uh, effort that kind of, you know, you know, pisses somebody off that, Are, I spent so much time, but you can spend all the time in the world, but if he, does, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it, you know, but uh, I, I, I believe uh, this, the student has to first know his own individual self, you know, before going out, because when you go out and you can't also, you know, try and say that I'm going to make a tune for this guy, because this is the kind of tune he likes, it's never going to happen. He may, it may work once, you know, unless you've had like eight, 10 years of an association, you know, like I, me and Mr. Varma, I knew him so well that I could give him a song and, and he would like it. And then I would tell him, I knew you'd like it. So, you know, but, but I think as you grow, uh, I mean, as 25 years for me in, in this industry, I have learned to understand the directors, Okay, or understand producers, understand what they want. Okay, and I can give them what they want. But if I can still put in something that I want to, then I've achieved something. But I can't. I'll be very rare if I, if I, if they like something that, you know, sometimes in in your in your bank of songs you play something and it they, and you don't even expect them to like it and they'll pick it up and then that's a bonus for you. But that's only uh, it's only luck and you know it. It, it has to be a bonus only. We used to get these large physical hard body samplers with just one, 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 eight MB or 16 MB. Today I've got terabytes of samples. Okay. Right. And the samples are essentially, see, I mean, in background score, it's there to create a mock-up of what you're going to do when you, but so when you, you, I create a piece, I create it with samples and then I can get the live musicians to play, but maybe I don't even need the live musicians because they sound good already. Yes. Okay. I mean, like people still think that Satya had like a lot of orchestra. It was all played on keys <laughs> and, and nobody still believes. And now, okay, if you listen to the sound, you'd say, okay, but at that time, it was well done. It was well engineered. It was well presented. Sure. I mean, today you have, you have enough that you can create, but you know, just the live, live musician is you're using his mind. His mind will interpret something that maybe your keys won't be able to interpret. You can still get to play. I mean, you can, if he plays what he plays, you can still imitate what he does on your, on your keys, but he will, his intelligence will create something that, it's his mind. We are, we are paying for the mind, you know? So right. you, but to compose, you don't need samples. And I, I never had any of it. And I, I created Nene Pelartha. 
yes, I, when I had to make the music, I needed everything, but I could have just had a guitar and, you know, a, a yes. bass and a keyboard and just drums and done it. I mean, that's how they used to do it in the earlier days. It's just that, yes. you know, I mean, today if I hear a Saregama uh, album, you know, that's why you have Karwa, where they put everything in a box. If I hear it slightly produced, I'll have a problem. Because right. it's it's that mono sound. I can't I can't now suddenly hear stereo out of it. It'll never sound right. It's like the Beatles. I I heard it in mono. Suddenly when they tried to remaster it, everything it went for a toss. It was never the way they conceived it. So people don't like to remaster stuff that was created in that era. So I think I mean, you you can you can safely compose without all this equipment. They are making films like that. So, I mean, when you put a song, where even somebody lip syncing a song is going to fall completely flat on your face in terms of the narrative of the, of the film. You, I mean, you'd be like, why the hell is the song there? But the audio companies need a promo song. In fact, the audio companies will insist on putting the songs. Otherwise, how are you going to get the crores from them? And if it's a big, big hero film, they will insist on the song. So that's why big heroes don't like to do, you know, these indie films because uh, that doesn't do much to their star status. You know, it, it, you may get an award and, you know, you may be critically acclaimed, but it doesn't do anything, you know, to your star states, star status. So that's why you have a Rajkumar Rao and Ayushman Kurana and all these guys doing these kind of films, you know, where the, there's a there's a business for all these films, you know, it's like, I mean, you, you take a Mahesh Babu or, you know, any of these big stars and I mean, they have a set of Prabhas and you ask him to do a indie film. I mean, it's never going to work even as a proposal. Okay? Right. You will need songs and uh, the audio will be sold for an extremely premium price and then they'll have to recover it. So the songs have to be promoted. And so it, it cannot say that it was giving a wrong message in the film. It, the film has to be designed that's why T-series, they, when you, apparently when you, when you go there, they tell you, here, you pick the songs from our catalog, but we, we are going to shoot, or you can tell us how you're going to shoot, but we are going to have the songs. And I think in company, they were very upset because Ramu just had one song, Khalas, yes. which was the one that was the, and there were some hit songs, but it was never there in the film because he never shot them. So they were very <laughs> upset when they saw this. They said, picture was achi bani, gaane ke dar. <laughs> so, so songs, so for, for indie makers, songs are going to, are hardly going to be there. And if, unless it's in a very, uh, it's, it, it's, it's very contextual and, and it, it has meaning, you know, it's not going to be there. It's, it's going to be there on your cassette. So you'll have seven, eight songs that you'll record. There won't be a budget for the audio. So it's, there is a big change. See, but in Hollywood, they have an entire OST. Songs are playing. They, they, yes. There's somebody who sources the songs and they're playing but for like 30 seconds. Yes. And there's a lot of royalty being collected for that. But they are so I think the OST thing will start. But then hmm. you need you you so you know it'll 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 take the weight of, of us background scoring musicians. Probably we may have to do less music, you know, when these songs come. classical, Indian classical, I mean, Indian classical music was like part of your household, you know, I mean, where the girl had to go and learn Bharatanatyam and then she will have a Arangetam and then, you know, somebody, and then when the guests come, then the, the son and daughter are supposed to perform, you know, and it was all, you know, it's very important, I think, to learn any craft. I mean, at least, you know, go through the basics. Okay. I right. mean, uh, as a, as, as a filmmaker, film, people want to learn editing and cinematography. Okay. And I think, uh, like, I, I became a sound engineer for all my projects just because I, I didn't want to depend on somebody, uh, some engineer, especially for my independent work. Okay. I, I, I've mixed good drums, okay, for foreign artists. But, I, but I've listened to that music. See, finally, I'm replicating what I'm hearing with my ears. You know, it's like uh, I can I can write down you know 
my entire EQ template and all that. But it it changes music to music. I there is you know this template template business has to stop. You know because songs are different. You know and you can't just suddenly come in and put in your template without hearing the music. So <laughs> I I started doing it and then you know uh, I started. I in fact I did a lot of work. Okay and. Uh, and then i stopped and i now i have my my associate vikram who i work with and we we are like nerds we in fact when we're not working we're on youtube or we are going through tutorials or we are we are checking out what all these great people who 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 are from the non digital space talking about how they were engineering and getting anecdotes from them but finally applying everything you know but it it may not apply to a song but you know at least something but that that discipline you know it's this this thing about going to your peers and and listening to what they have to say makes so much sense you know because mm-hmm. you will pick up something from there you know otherwise it's it's you're down to this youtube culture i call it you know somebody learns one guitar lick and he plays it well and he becomes an incredible guitar player you ask him to play in another context he won't be able to the the biggest musicians are the ones who can who can play in a studio atmosphere for any music not a specific kind of music so classical music is very important it's 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 a uh, it teaches you discipline but it doesn't teach you how to score music for a film for you know the uh, uh, background scores have borrowings of classical music but A, a film score is very different from a classical score. Very different. It, it's film score has its own language, has its own, you know, chords, has its own uh, movements. You know, it's it's all very different, and it's and it's become a little more sound design now. Now I can't tell between a sound design and a film score right now because of the kind of movies that all these. The, the gone are the days of themes. You know, the Marvel themes, Superman. And, <laughs> you don't hear any more themes. You you tell me that. the themes of some of these uh, uh, new films you won't it's it's very it's very 5 10 second you know pieces you know and uh, because and so when you get a film also like that it's cut to that music so you have no other choice but to to follow the cut and the pattern you know when you're making music so classical music i believe uh, is important but it's not compulsory you know i mean i believe history is very very important i need to know uh, you know why why ravel and debussy's music had an influence on some jazz pianist you know and why he why he borrowed the romantic era you know wagner's music and world war oh, there is a connection everywhere is and i'll tell you there's nothing nothing like having knowledge okay just you know go and dive deep and come out and you'll or you will take back something from there but very important that just when you have the time go through music i mean uh, i used to be only listening to jazz i became so thick skinned about that music but i just opened my ears i listen to everything i listen to uh, dua lipa i listen to every pop artist right now i listen to because and if you're in the film business making film music you better listen to everything right now i have uh, two others which are coming out one one i'm doing uh, is uh, in fact i'm actually taking uh, one of my uh, so anyways what happened was uh, let me go back to namma music namma music started as me putting out the albums i wanted to put out so basically i had created a lot of cinematic music in the sense they were they were for the cinema but never went into the films or mm-hmm. or there were ideas that were just half halfway done and i started creating so i i created about eight volumes in seven months okay uh, which is available on spotify and everywhere and then i started collaborating i started producing artists where i i am involved in it but i have either my composition or i have a song and I'm, so i i i uh, produced this incredible teacher and flute player whose daughter is the famous varija shri venu gopal Name is H S Menu Gopal. Flute. I produced his album. I produced this Bangalore band called People Tree, and uh, mm. I, 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 me and this guitar player Tony Das, who's one of the best guitar players we have in 
in Bangalore. Uh, we we created something during the pandemic called Relax Man. So it's it's a, a tempo of about 85 to 95, just one tempo and very nice, cool, chilled out music and kind of became a hit. So we are on to volume two. But I am uh, also doing something. I've basically taken one of my songs from Nine Pellarta, Yetu Veli Pohini Manasu. And uh, I have created uh, seven versions of the same song played by different musicians wow. from all over the world. Wow. So that I'll be wow. putting out probably next month. So essentially just making music. You know, I think it's very important to make music uh, with this pandemic right now. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> the last album I had done was Matters of the Heart, which was my album, which took me nine years to complete. And uh, then I didn't even release it for another two more years because I I enjoyed the whole process of me. I had 50 musicians on it from all over the world. Some Grammy winners, you know, some. In, but it was my compositions which I got them to interpret. But the minute that album was out, I didn't know what to do, what else to do because I had already gone into it. I was not doing any film work. And that vacuum got created. And then I got back to doing films again. But now I I believe I, after the after doing that album, I have, this year I've put out so many albums. I'm looking to collaborate. I'm looking to see it's always nice to have another mind. The mind doesn't have to be uh, right. on, on the same wavelength as you, but it's another mind. And as long as the person has the same commitment and passion that I have into making music, then there's only going to be more music and it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be the best thing. Otherwise, if you switch on the news, it's, uh, it's only coronavirus in the morning, you know, it opens the figures and, you know, it's very depressing. I guess the vaccine will come out, but you know, we, we, I feel really bad because a lot of these musicians who play for artists, solo artists, have uh, have no work right now because the artists are not performing, you know. So, but I want to I want to uh, uh, see. This, I, I, this is a film school, and you know, uh, you you film filmmakers will be asking you all. I mean, do we really need to learn music? You know, I'm sure it is very very important. You know, to to I mean, to to make music a part of your film making process. You know, I know in the old days, I mean, Vidhi Vidhi Chopra used to tell me he used to play music while shooting a scene. You know, but it's very important. I when you're narrating yes. a story, you 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 have music in the background. You know, some people do that, but but it's 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 I can't. You know, it, gone are the days. Even silent silent films had music. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very, and you know, now there is a marriage between sound, sound design and music. I just hope that the sound design people work together with the music guys at the inception stage, you know, or at least in parallel, you can't expect the music to happen. And then the sound design guy does, you know, I mean, does his effects. And then there will be a fighting on the table where somebody will want to keep his, and you know everybody wants to hear their bits on on the mixing section, you know. And uh, I think uh, uh, if if you find some sort of you know uh, collaborative effort, it's, it's you don't treat sound as it's not musical. Every, I believe there's music in every every sound. You know, you just have to find the harmony somewhere there. You know, and uh, I mean you can see right now. I mean on with speeches of politicians, people are already, you know, playing music across and creating harmony. They all mean videos, but they found the harmony there somewhere. So there is, there is uh, harmony in everything. We just got to find it. But uh, music is a very important uh, aspect of your filmmaking process and don't skip it. And I, I think you should take extra effort to pay, to pay a little more attention to it. You don't need to learn you don't need to learn music if it's a problem. I know, and you know, when, when you grow up, you've already made your choices and everything is like, like software today. We, yes. uh, luckily they have made Cubase, Logic, uh, all the, the windows are very similar. So you don't have to go through a bigger learning curve. Otherwise, I mean, if you are a Pro Tools user, Pro Tools is still Pro Tools because 
they want to they want to be that way but all the other ableton today everybody is getting into music because of ableton because it's so simple you know just drag and drop and and people are trying the doors are trying to make it easy for you nobody yes. opens you know, go to go through hardship in learning the software so if it's, it's been made that way then why don't you you know bring it in your curriculum i mean uh, i don't know what uh, what doors you'll use at your at your uh, school you should move from garage band to at least logic pro x cubase requires a license and it becomes more expensive and all yes. but but it's it's i believe it's an investment and you know and it and it's going to discipline your file management you, you know you as you as you progress you collect you know you collect information you collect sounds you collect you know vsts and you you know you you're building your little you know cupboard full of you know things that you collected so you need to invest in a slightly professional you know doc garage band is is good but you can even go into go in for ableton which is also yes. you know quite reasonable and it's it's quite incredible i mean i've been a nuendo cubase user for nearly 20 years right now we used to mm-hmm. we used to work with pro tools first but this pro tools just became it's 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 now it's obviously uh, using the computer power otherwise we used to get these dsps now i swear by cubase or nuendo but that's each each user and his liking basically it's a myth that you need to be in a studio to record i also want to let you know that um, yes absolutely. absolutely okay i mean i have done stuff from my home in fact i have i'm i have a, a door in every room okay so this is my bedroom there's a door there's a door in the hall there are two doors in the hall there's one and we just wake up and we make music okay so i i miss my big speakers which is in my bombay studio but i mean you know after some time you can't listen to music at that at that level you know it you get tired it's ear fatigue but uh you can make music from anywhere so all your filmmakers i believe they should they should just get a door and put it on their computer and you know just start it's you know you explore you you can you can you can edit you you can have your fcp on it and you know it's it's all going to work out but you don't need to be in a large studio environment you can get a uh you know a microphone and you know you have you you have these uh, filters that you know block sound and everything and you can clean up the sound process the sound you have mic modelers so you can get you can use one of these uh, uh slate digital mics and it can model model uh, uh, any mic that you want you know so all that is and you know finally after all that you for you you're making it and all these all these details will never be even you know uh, will never even be caught by anybody because it's your effort finally you know you'd be you'd be hoping that somebody would point out and nobody gives a shit you do it for your satisfaction i i don't say that you shouldn't do it but uh, uh you can make music right now from anywhere you know so uh, this thing that i don't have a studio and and if somebody sets up one more door at his house it's a vinyl player or flute player you just exchange files and that's how we did sadak also yeah.